Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. I wanted to do this episode today because I still hear a lot of sheep being deliberately restricted of food in late pregnancy with the idea that if you feed them too much, it causes big lambs, prolapsed vaginas and lambing difficulties left, right and centre. So I'm here to beg you not to do this and discuss some of the science around it. Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and want more like it. I'll see you in a sec. So let's get on the same page about the basics of a used nutrition requirements during pregnancy and we'll break down some of the myths around it. A ewe is pregnant for about 150 days, give or take a few, so about five months. In the first half of pregnancy, there's very little extra demand on her body. We can basically keep her on a maintenance diet, meaning that whatever she's normally on that will maintain her current body weight, that's all she needs. It's usually about two centimetres pasture length if she's already in the perfect body condition. We want to be careful about not stressing her with things like sharing in the first six to seven weeks of pregnancy, or she can lose that pregnancy. But as far as nutrition's concerned, no big changes. In fact, you actually want to actively prevent her from gaining a lot of weight in the first half, unless she's already underweight in the first place. But otherwise, just keep her steady during the first half of pregnancy. It's really the second half of pregnancy, or even the final trimester, so the last six weeks, that things get intense. 70% of the lamb's body growth happens in the final four to six weeks of the pregnancy. She needs a lot more food to grow this lamb. So a single bearing ewe, as in one that's only got one lamb inside, needs an average of 23% more energy. If she's got twins, that bounces up to about 35%. And if she's carrying triplets, it's a staggering 45% more energy that she needs to keep those lambs alive. If she's a hogget, a little young one, she's gonna need more again as her body is still trying to finish its own growing alongside growing that lamb. And if you choose to share her in mid-pregnancy, be aware of the risks and know that her energy requirements go up again by about 30% just to stay warm. I'm uploading a video discussing the risks with winter sharing. It will be either up here or if the link's not there just yet, subscribe and catch it, it'll be uploaded in the next few days. Now her stomach is only so big. She's also got lambs on the inside and they're taking up all that space. Obviously, the more lambs she has, the more space they're taking up. So those lambs are demanding more food while preventing her literally from being able to fit more food inside. And we're expecting things to go well? It often doesn't if her weight and nutrition is not perfect. So now you know why she needs so much food. So why do people restrict them from eating in late pregnancy? There's been an idea around since the dawn of time it seems that the more you feed a ewe, the bigger the lambs will be and she'll have difficulty lambing them, as well as higher risk of vaginal prolapses. So let's talk about both of those points. Let's start with the idea that feeding more results in abnormally large lambs. I'm going to link you to a good literature review um, on lambing issues in sheep, dystochia we call it. What it's found is that the effects of nutrient manipulation during pregnancy on fetal development and gestation length, as in how long the pregnancy lasts, in sheep are subtle and inconsistent. The full potential of lamb growth is genetic for the most part. However, it also showed, and this is key, that underfeeding sheep during late gestation is associated with intrauterine growth restriction. Now what that means is that if we starve a heavily pregnant ewe, the growth of those lambs will also be stunted. Smaller lambs have more difficulty surviving, especially if they come early, which is another risk with underfeeding. They cannot regulate their body temperature as well, they take longer to stand and drink. You're going to see more lamb deaths if they're coming out underweight. So yes, restricting the feed of skinny, stunted ewes will also stunt her lambs for sure and make it easier for them to come out of her skinny, stunted pelvis. But it's a false economy, guys, because they're little, they're more likely to be sickly and underdeveloped. It's these little stunted ones that are abnormally small, not the normal lambs that are abnormally large. I hope this is making sense. I get the feeling that I'm starting to babble a little, but I hope this is coming across clearly. One might argue that if you're needing to starve your heavily pregnant ewes to stunt their lambs so that they can come out, they might not be an ideal candidate to get pregnant in the first place, you know? 
Feed your growing hoggets, prioritize their feed, get them growing well, hit your weight targets, don't get them pregnant too young, and this risk is more or less nullified. I hope that made sense, let's move on. The other claim is that too much grass leads to increased rates of vaginal prolapses, aka bearings, you'll hear it referred to as bearings, it's where the vagina pops out the back. If you want to know more about prolapses in sheep, I'll put a link up here for you to an earlier episode. Yes, vaginal prolapses are heavily associated with overweight ewes, but a ewe is not going to be putting on weight in the last trimester of pregnancy. That won't be a thing. If you've already got an overweight ewe, the horse has already bolted, okay? The causes of prolapses are multifactorial. It's a when the stars align sort of situation. The vagina pops out because there's so much pressure on the inside of that sheep, something's got to give and the vagina is something that will give. So sheep with multiple lambs on the inside are high risk. Lambing paddocks on hillsides are high risk. Everything's sinking back as she walks uphill, increases that pressure. Overweight sheep are certainly high risk because they pack fat on in the inside as well as around the organs, inside the pelvis. So that's gonna to contribute to extra pressure. But guys, the focus needs to be on mating her at a healthy weight. Don't get overweight sheep pregnant. Mate her at a healthy weight body condition score three is ideal and then maintain her to keep her weight steady during the first half of pregnancy okay don't let her gain a lot during the first half of pregnancy i am doing an episode on feeding made easy for sheep as in how long the pasture length should be if you're trying to get her to lose weight or gain weight if it's already up i'll pop the link here if not subscribe and check back it'll be up just in the next few days by the time she's heading into the last six weeks of pregnancy you cannot be restricting her energy intake. She already needs so much more than she normally does to grow those lambs. And rest assured, she will grow those lambs if it kills her, okay? So where the risks outweigh any potential, likely mythological benefits is because our heavily pregnant ewes, especially those carrying multiple lambs or already overweight and struggling for food inside a cramped up stomach, those guys are already very high risk of a disease called pregnancy ketosis or sleepy sickness, which is essentially a starvation syndrome. They're also gonna be at high risk of hypocalcemia if you try and restrict their feed, which is deathly low calcium once they start producing milk. This happens so commonly in my job where the majority of our lifestyle blocks have pet sheep. So they're very loved, they're very well fed animals and often too much so, they've gotten pregnant when they are overweight. Okay guys, so keep those focuses on the right things. Don't be restricting her feed, don't be starving her in the final, in the final throes of pregnancy. And the final thing to understand, really important, is that lush grass is actually quite watery, hence, you know, it's lush. So yes, it's high protein, but it actually is often not enough even eating as much as they want of it, it's often still not enough to meet the energy requirements of a heavily pregnant ewe. If they have any of those other risk factors, carrying multiple lambs, too small, too old, too fat. So add in your pellets, get them used to eating pellets from a young age so they're not suspicious of it, and then introduce pellets to the diet slowly over the last six weeks of pregnancy. Remember, no sudden diet changes, we need to introduce the pellets slowly but those pellets are gonna drastically reduce the risk of her going down with sleepy sickness, they're very high energy, dense nutrition, and they're not big and bulky, and they're not gonna contribute at all to the risk of vaginal prolapses for her. Let them onto grass that is three centimeters or longer. This constitutes open buffet, and they're not struggling to get a proper mouthful when it's that long. Okay guys, take home messages are, grow your young animals well, don't get them pregnant too young. They don't need to be focusing on their own growing at the same time. Make them at a healthy weight and don't let them gain too much weight during the first half of pregnancy. Six weeks out from the planned start of lambing, you're gonna vaccinate, you're gonna crutch and dag, which is a little share around the bum and under the udder. Then set stock them on a flat, well-sheltered lambing paddock with nice long grass that's gonna see them through lambing. Back off and let them fill their little tummies. Introduce your palate slowly and increase those over the last six weeks of pregnancy. Of course, don't feed more than the maximum on the back of the packet. We don't wanna cause gut upsets. And if you do experience vaginal prolapses, deal with them as they arise. A few are expected. If you're having a lot, consider what else is going wrong that could have been prevented. 
but do not starve her. The risks are a thousand times more common. Focus on those preventative measures instead. Right, that's a topic that I'm quite passionate about, as you may notice, because we've got a few episodes <laughs> going up um, around that kind of topic at the moment. I'll leave it there for now. Subscribe, thumbs up if you found it useful, but more importantly, please share the episode with anyone who has got sheep and share on any of your farming or lifestyle blog pages. Get the message out. This idea needs to die. Right, I will see you for the next one, guys. See you later.